We move on to our next session. We all talked about technology and how it motivates students and how the modern learner is benefiting from it. But how do you indeed leverage technology to make use of it? Mr. Pramod Damodaran, the CEO of Hitstream Technologies, will now take the stage and talk on exactly how that happens. Good morning, everybody. Um, at the onset, I'd like to congratulate Utkarsh and his team uh, for this conference. I think this is their first conference in Chennai, and you guys are doing a fabulous job. And also, uh, we are very happy and privileged uh, because this is our product launch, basically, uh, that is happening in Asia. So we are uh, launching our product, our solution, in the Asian market today. And it is indeed uh, special for me because uh, I'm born in Chennai, this company was founded in Chennai, but uh, in the last five years we have been focusing only on the US market and uh, call it destiny or whatever, uh, we are launching the product for Asia in Chennai. So Utkarsh, uh, thank you for allowing us to leverage this platform for that and we are really proud, uh, very happy um, to have this session going on here. I think all of you are having a good time. So this product, uh, Headlusion, so that's what we are calling our solution. So before I go into the details, let's make a quick video about what we are and uh, you know, what we do, all that stuff. Awesome. I like that video. Thank you, guys. That's for my team there. <coughs> so, um, so what we do basically, right? So we call ourselves as Educator Effectiveness Solutions. Uh, what is Educator Effectiveness, basically? So um, what we try to uh, align here is with basically the end-to-end -end platform of how classroom observations happen, how teachers are observed in the classrooms, integrated with a powerful PD management system for the teachers, you know, like uh, where you start from goal setting to recommending PD courses for them, ensure that they are aligned with the school goals and all that stuff. But basically to look at what, what we had, uh, you know, which entity in the ecosystem we cater to, if you take up education, there are four big stakeholders, the teachers, the administrators, the parents and the students, right? So. There is a massive focus of technology on students, obviously. You know, you have uh, uh, e-learning, you have smart boards, you know, the focus has been mostly on facilitating content, how it reaches to the child, which is very important. You know, there's no debate that about that because students are the key entity in the school for whom the schools are there. But the other key entities who gets ignored in this technology evolution have been the teachers and the administrators. Right? So uh, if you look at even today's school, uh, in certain cases, students are more aware of technology than the teachers. Because due to certain reasons, right? The teachers obviously you know, are not exposed to a lot of technology. Uh, the principals, basically who's the leader of the school, who sets the tone and the decorum for the school, they don't find time to go and explore new technologies. So. If you look at uh, a typical day of a principal, all of you are principals here, and I assure you, uh, you know, understand how it is. A principal's day is overloaded. I, I've been talking with a principal who manages a school with about 10,000 students, and she was saying that, you know, my day starts with a prayer when the first school bus leaves my campus, and the prayer stays on in my lips till the last school bus comes back into the campus. Because it's just not academics, it's just not lesson planning, 
It's just not teachers, the principals have to manage. It's about safe environment, safe classrooms, safe playgrounds, safe drinking water, anything, right? Any infrastructure, your laboratories, your school buses, any assets in your school environment needs to be managed and monitored by the heads of the schools. And it is no small task. And added to that, you have an uh, entire spectrum of teachers whom you will have to manage, right? So I have had a lot of interactions with teach principals, administrators across the world. So one of the principals was saying that <clears throat> I was talking to a teacher and I said, you need to learn to love students, you know, love the kids whom you teach. And the teacher was saying, I'm not getting paid to love the students. I'm getting paid only to teach them. And the principal says, well, children don't learn from people whom they don't like. And the teacher says that, well, that is not my job as well. I'm here to teach. I don't know whether he learns or not. <laughs> right? So these are type of people you need to handle on a daily basis. And it's no joke. So teachers have a separate set of challenges. No questions about it, right? They, they handle students across age groups. Research says that uh, handling middle school girls and high school and higher secondary boys are the most complicated uh, age group in a K-12 education system, you know, because of emotional changes, hormonal changes, whatever you call it as, but it shows that handling a middle school girls and high school boys are very challenging. But what, like the teachers at least have to handle only one set of students, but as a principals and heads of institutions, you need to handle all the students and all the teachers who are going to come up with diverse backgrounds, diverse emotional quotients, diverse family problems, and all this stuff, right? So, so it, it's not just a job when you say teaching. Teaching is more of an emotional connect they have with the students. So it depends on what happens at their home, whether they have a fight with the husband, fight with the parent, how do they come to school, how do they treat kids, everything. So amidst all these challenges, right, we understand, okay, the, the administrators of the school, you have a big task at hand or the principals. Imagine chairmen, correspondents. They have 10 schools. Though they might not appear tensed, actually it is the pressure of one principal into 10 for these chairmen and correspondents. And especially for big chains of schools who has one branch in Bombay and the other branch in Sri Parambatur and the other branch in Kanyakumari. So how do you address this problem? How can we leverage technology to make your job a little bit easy. Probably you go home and one hour early than what you used to do. That has been a focus. That was the educator effectiveness concept. Well, the, the origin of educator of effectiveness in US was quite different, you know, like Obama came into power, there was a new uh, bill called No Child Left Behind, and he wants to focus on quality of teachers and all that stuff. But when we started reaching out or studying about the Asian market, we decided to reach out to the other important stakeholder in the ecosystem, the parents. Because as principals, as administrators, they are the other key entity whom you're handling on a daily basis. And uh, no questions about it, they are the most difficult stakeholder in this e entire ecosystem. I'm also a parent, right? So I know how difficult I am for my school principal. <laughs> so we just went and checked with the parents, right? Uh, do you know that in your school, in your kid's school, teachers are being observed in their classroom? Do you have any information about, you know, uh, is, does the school tell you that this is what our teachers do? This is what our teachers profile. Uh, we do an observation of the teacher. Are you aware of that? 67% of them said they had no idea about it. Right? Now, I'm sure every school does that. There's not even a single school who doesn't do a classroom observation, who doesn't monitor the teacher performance and all this stuff. But the problem is you don't have data or the metrics an easy way to reach out to the parents or show to the parents in a PTA saying that this is what you do. The next one we asked is, obviously, that was a very vested interest question. Um, so when you look for a school as a parent, what do you look into? The, is it infrastructure? And we gave a lot of options there. 69% of them said quality of teaching. Now, quality of teaching is a very uh, vague response. You know, define quality like uh, a strong coffee is a good one for this gentleman. A light coffee is a good one for this gentleman. So quality is going to be vague. So, but still the focus has been on teaching. Now that's something we need to take home that, you know, the parents are now aware that it's the teachers who matter in a school. More than the AC classrooms, more than whatever, you know, infrastructural benefits you provided. And then we asked about a very, very uh, self-oriented question. 
do you think it, you would be happy if we implement a technology for observing teachers and professional management of teachers and letting you know about the progress? And uh, the response was very happy for us. They said they would be more than happy to know, you know, what the kids' teachers do, what is their professional development plan, what is their profile. They are really interested to know about this, but they don't have any information of that. Now we understand that all this information is already there with the school, but it's just that you have not been able to give it to the parents, right? So that is where the solution comes into picture. So what we do, in a brief, exceptional profile management, right? So we have a one-stop shop where you can capture all your teacher profiles, what are the documents, what are the certifications, what are the training they have attended, if the school is following a credit system, clock hour system, whatever, you can track everything in a single stop in profile management. Asset management and evaluation. So teachers are not the only assets in a school, right? They are the human assets, and they are the most critical assets, no questions about it. But a school has a lot of assets other than teachers. Like I said, infrastructure, laboratories, school buses, playgrounds, classrooms, right? How do you monitor classrooms? My kid's classroom, if it has three nails protruding, I'm not going to be a happy parent, right? So these are different assets that as a principal or as an administrator, you would need to manage and ensure that you're giving a safe environment to all your students. Documents management. Again, do you have a fire extinguisher in your school? Is it getting reviewed on time? If it's not getting reviewed on time, do you get an alert? Are you being informed that your assets are not being managed properly? Do you have a school bus driver? Is this profile, is this police background verification updated? Agreed, you're giving it to a vendor, you're outsourcing to a vendor, but do you get that information whether the profile management, whether the documents are managed properly? Obviously, the key piece, classroom observations. As I said, every school does classroom observation. Only thing is that you take a pen and a paper and uh, you do an observation. A lot of times the feedback doesn't reach the teacher, or if it reaches the teacher, it reaches very late in time. And the action that should be taken on the observation is further delayed, and probably it takes 12 months for the teacher to act on your feedback. That's not going to do any use for the, either the teacher, either the principal, nor the students. How can you make it dynamic online? That's what we do with classroom observation. PD management, training. I think the most important, but the most overlooked feature that we do for teachers. Training for teachers is one of the most important thing that as leaders of schools and administrators, we should be giving them, right? But agreed, again, there is a problem of time management. You should call them on a Saturday, Sundays, but not today. You have technology, you have online courses, you have self-paced courses. If a teacher is traveling in a school bus for 40 minutes from her home to school, she can actually complete a training course in the school bus, right? You don't have to call her on a Saturday. She can be on vacation, but still she can complete a professional development course if the school is able to provide it in an online platform. So you need to break the boundaries of location, physical presence, and all this stuff in today's era. And then we have a QR code-based ID generation. I think that's a very cool feature we have because you know every staff or every profile that you have in the system comes with a QR code. You can print it in an ID card. So imagine how cool it would be like a school bus driver has an ID card with a QR code. And you can inform your parents, all you have to do is take a smartphone and scan the QR code. You're going, to, you're going to see the profile of the bus driver, whether he has a valid license, whether he has a valid police background done, who is his driver, what is his Aadhaar, what is his ration card. Put all the documents there, share it, make parents be part of this journey, right? And for that, the key thing is going to be leveraging technology. So that's what we do and much more, right? So I'm not going to talk about the entire product here. We have a stall outside. I request all of you to visit there, see what we do, and we have a couple of Kindles for offer for principals or administrators who are visiting a booth. So please drop in your card and take home a Kindle. Now, um, actually we are much honored and privileged that one of the most leading educationists, Dr. Ajit Prasad Jain, has reviewed our product and agreed to be our strategic advisor and mentor in this journey for us. So I take this occasion to welcome him on stage, present him with a memento, and share a few words about what he has seen about the product. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Uh, every one of you uh, are talking about the technology in the right from the morning. And uh, most of the crowd knows me well. So I'm Dr. Ajit Prasad Jain, the ex-principal of Bhavan School, known as a technology man. 
So right from the application form, the the servant queues, uh, the days are gone, and the paper, you, paper, all the papers used to criticize about giving application form and making the parents to stand on the queue right from previous day night, etc. So which I have broken around 11 years back, introducing the online application form. So right from the application form, and then interview dates, and then application, and then admission. When the admission is come, and then payment of fees. And when the payment of fees is come, then admitting the child and uh, transferring all the data to your uh, uh, profile management. And then this is a classroom uh, section allotment. After section allotment, you should know what is the timetable and who is the teacher. When the timetable is known and uh, daily the child goes to uh, school, <coughs> and what books to bring, what books to carry, and then assignment, and then homework. So everything, and then uh, test. What are the test date, what are the test assignment, and uh, what are the portions for the test. Everything is sent to the parent through online. And uh, the ERP, what uh, the brainchild of mine, the school skies, which has contained everything right from the application form till the TC. But when everything is going on online, the face recognition attendance register, and the RFID attendance register, everything is online, but why? The teacher observation is still in the paper. The HOD goes to the class and she writes down and it goes into the personal file. And there is no one to look into it except when uh, annual inspection, when the, some other people coming and seeing it. But the management doesn't know what is happening. And uh, it is not an easy task to go through the Suppose a school uh, which is having more than 5,000 to 6,000 children where there are more than 300 teachers. The management or the manager of the school, it is very difficult for him to take the file and go through it. So I was wondering what, how we were going to make this particular aspect into online and then the people from Stream Technologies came to my office and they showed me the project. I was so much thrilled and uh, the way in which they have done it, I am telling you it is nothing but maintaining your ACR or EPMS, Professional Management System or Annual Confidence Report. So once everything is done, just uh, taking your mobile phone into your classroom and then uh, all drop down uh, messages they have given, uh, the fluency of the teacher, bad, etc., the average, excellent, etc., everything. So everything they have given a uh, drop down box and also I have given them ideas and they have implemented everything. So once the submit at the end of the class, so the record is saved. Even your chairman or manager who is sitting in Singapore or in Los Angeles, he can just log in and see. If a manager, management is having more than one school, and they can compare the uh, performance of a teacher of all the schools. They, take in, they can take a particular department, English, and see uh, place A, place B, place C, place D, how the teachers are being performed. So it is an end-to-end -end solution, everything they have given. So I think uh, you can visit the stall and uh, you can see it and go through it. The product is extremely good as an academician and as a technology man. I recommend you to go through it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Thank you everybody. And just to add, uh, I heard in the last uh, forum that anything that is free is pretty dangerous. So we are not free. We have a cost. Uh, <laughs> so they said don't download anything that is free in the app. So that's why we are not giving it for free for anybody. So don't mind it. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. And I hope all of you enjoy the conference as much as we do. Thank you.